What's going on guys? This is Chandler Smith and in this video I'm going to show you how this 11 Plex that I just purchased is the worst investment that I have ever made. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you how it might turn out to be one of the best. So with all of that being said, let's jump into it. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, I've been investing in real estate for the last eight years. I currently own 136 units of rental real estate, and I've had some good deals and some great deals and some deals that I've learned a lot from. But this deal, this 11 unit apartment complex that I just purchased is truly the worst deal that I have ever purchased. And that is not clickbait. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how much money this is going to make me well, actually how much money this deal is going to lose me. And then I'm gonna show you what I plan on doing to change that. First off, let me catch you up to speed. This was actually an MLS listing and it was in a very competitive market. And so I put in a pretty high offer at $1.1 million for this 11 unit apartment complex. Now, I got my offer accepted. And if you wanna learn more about how I went through that process and how I won out in a competitive market, you can click on this video. However, you just need to know that I got it under contract at a price that I wasn't necessarily pumped about. Now, in due diligence, we were able to pick it apart and get back back $75,000 at closing, which was awesome, but it still didn't necessarily make this a home run deal. As a matter of fact, this was anything but a home run deal. So let me explain. Actually, there's not a whole lot to explain. Um, I think all that you need to know is I had it under contract at $1.1 million and the gross rents on this property were $3,700. And $50. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, Chandler, what in the hell? I don't know. Do I need to bleep that out? I've been saying it more than I should on the channel. Let's bleep it out. <laughs> a lot of you are saying, Chandler, what in the is wrong with you? I want to show you how bad this deal really was. Now, if you don't have it already, you can go onto the app store and download my free app where you can run the numbers on rental properties. And I created this because I wanted to make it very easy for you to run quick math and see how good a deal a rental property really was. When you open it up, you can plug everything in. I plugged it in at a one million thirty five thousand dollar purchase price the reason that i did this is the app is so simple there's not a great way to show getting money back at closing and truth be told well i'm not going to dive into it that's what we're going to run the numbers at i also was able to work it out with my bank where i got a very low down payment and then money back at closing so the down payment is going to be 19.5 the reason i'm explaining all of this is all of these things that I did are making the deal even better. And I want you to see, even with all of that added in, how absolutely terrible this deal is. So if you come down, I actually got this on a 25 year AM. Should be a 20 year AM if you're anyone else, but I negotiated extremely well on this property. Um, that's a commercial property and got it on a 25 year AM with 25% down and money back at closing, which ended up being absolutely extraordinary, except for the fact that the rents were total garbage. I'm sure a lot of you are also saying, Chandler, how on earth did you get a bank to give you a loan on this property when the rents are so hair? Uh, terrible. <laughs> and the truth is because I have a relationship with this bank and they trust me a lot because if you go to any other bank with a deal like this, they're going to say no way in. We're not going to bleep it out this time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, my interest rate is 3.65%, which also I feel like I did really well on that for a commercial loan. Um, and for those of you wondering, my rate is fixed for 10 years. I've got a balloon payment at 10 and it's amortized over that 25 years, like I just said. Here is where it gets ugly. The rents are $3,750. Now, I'm not gonna run into the details of this property, but let me just tell you that this property had two bedroom apartments, apartments that anywhere else in town, including my apartment complex, just a couple blocks up the street, should be renting at 850 or $900 per unit. And they were rented in the 300s, multiple units in the $300 range and one that was even in the $200 range. I don't wanna overshare information here. I don't wanna over blast the last person that owned it or the last person managing it, but it wasn't being managed very well. As a matter of fact, it was being managed very, very poorly, 
when you look at what they were charging compared to what they should have been charging or what market rents were. But when I took ownership of the property, rents were at $3,750 on the combination of all 11 units. Now on my other numbers, I like to run things at a 6% vacancy, a 12% maintenance, a 6% management, and then the insurance on this property is $1,800. The taxes are $3,725. You know that's accurate because I was gonna say because it has a 25 at the end, but I could have just made that up, but it is accurate. <laughs> so when you click run the numbers, I wanna show you guys this. My cash flow on this property if I don't do anything, if I leave it the way that it is, it's going to lose me $21,000 a year, all right? That means by owning the property, after paying my mortgage expenses, all of that, I'm going to lose $21,000 a year with where the rents are at currently. Because the way that it works is you get your rents coming in and you pay your expenses. My expenses would be substantially more than the rents coming in. What I'm telling you is this deal was absolutely atrocious. And truth be told, looking back, I should have negotiated a lot more than I did because the reality is I don't think there are many people that would have been able to get a loan on this property without having an extremely good relationship with a bank where they can go to them and say, look, you guys know I've done this before. You know what I can do to a property. You know our history, our relationship, what I'm capable of. So you're gonna need to just trust me. And in the banking world, there aren't a lot of banks that like to just trust you. <laughs> the only reason this bank was willing to trust me is because all 136 units of rental real estate that I own, I have loans through this bank on. And so they've been able to see me do business. I've been able to build that relationship. And they said, Chandler, this looks absolutely terrible, but we're gonna take you on your word and let's see what happens. Actually, it was a little bit more of a conversation than that, but here we are. We were able to push the loan through and get the property. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, Chandler, where is the catch? Well, here it is. The truth is that I went and did due diligence on this property. I've gone through, I've walked every one of the units. I know the area extremely well, and I know what these units are worth, and I know that we're going to be able to raise rents substantially on this property. The other thing is the units were all on month-to-month -month leases. And the reason for this is a lot of these tenants have probably been here for 10, 15 years, and just milking the fact that no rent increases have ever happened. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, well, Chandler, aren't a lot of the tenants going to be frustrated with these crazy rent increases? Yeah, they're going to be frustrated. That's an unfortunate thing that we have to deal with. But the reality is that these people have most likely been getting an incredible deal for years. They also need to understand that paying $300 for a two bedroom apartment, they should be extremely happy that they were able to be in a situation like that for as long as they have been. I mean, literally you can go back five years from now and you couldn't find anything anywhere close to that if you're out looking on the market. And that's why a lot of them have probably stayed here for as long as they have. But the truth is we are only raising rents to what the market demands. What that means is we're not going in, you know, charging way above what if they hopped on Craigslist and looked for apartment, the best price they could find. As a matter of fact, we're still more than competitive with what we're raising rents to. And it sucks. It sucks for them, but it also sucks for us. And if I have to choose between losing $21,000 this year or, uh, you know, raising rents, I'm going to raise rents. Now, the tricky part then comes to, well, Chandler, you could raise rents and just break even on the property. I could, but again, I'm taking on the risk of this property and I'm locking up a ton of money in this property to be able to purchase it. And I only do that with the hopes of getting a return. Now, can every one of these tenants choose to leave? Yes, they can. And do they have 30 days notice before we're increasing rents so they can try and figure out what they wanna do and if they wanna leave or if they wanna stay or how they wanna adjust? Yeah, 100% we've given that because it's the law and we're gonna do things the proper way. Finally, we also are allowing them to go month to month if they want a little time to be able to decide whether they wanna stay or whether they wanna go so that even if they do stay the next month, yeah, their rents are going to be increased, but they're not locked into a lease. They don't have to make a decision right then. They've got time to decide whether they wanna stay with the higher rents or whether they wanna go and find something else. So, um, and again, I'm gonna get a hard time because I'm going back to that when again, I could have 
broken even and not raise them quite as much as we are, but we are giving all of these tenants $100 off what we're going to raise them if any of these go vacant and we fill them with someone new. And I feel like that's more than fair for the situation that we're both caught up in. All right, now that I've covered all of that, you understand that this was a horrible deal. You understand that a bank wouldn't have given a loan to very many people because it was such a terrible deal. And you understand that I way overpaid for this property because we have a lot of work ahead of us. Because anytime you increase rents, you definitely have to make sure that everything is maintained properly. And in due diligence, we did find a lot of issues that we're gonna have to go in and fix as we're increasing these rents. And that doesn't mean that we're gonna go and do a total makeover while these tenants are in there. It does mean that a lot of the uh, general maintenance stuff that was maybe pushed off, we need to make sure we are 100% on it so that it makes sense for them to stay because we do hope that all of the tenants stay. Um, but for those that do leave, we're we're gonna make sure that we go in, we clean up the units, and we get them rented at an even higher price than if the tenants choose to stay. Now, do we have crazy maintenance to do on them? The truth is they've been pretty well taken care of. On the exterior, there were lots of fixes and other things that we needed to do. Um, and on the interior, there's flooring that needs to be fixed. We're hoping to add a washer and dryer in the near future because that'll help us get even more in rents out of those units if we fill them with new tenants. And so there's a myriad of little things here and there, but overall, the units are in pretty good shape. And so we just need to go in, clean them up and get them re-rented or just take care of them properly for the current tenants. Now that I've talked to you to death, I'm sure a lot of you wanna know how much I'm actually going to make on these units once everything has been stabilized and the rents have been increased to market rents. And so the truth is we're planning on not having it to this point until a year from now. That's because we're hoping a lot of these tenants stay. However, if every one of them decides to leave, we'll probably have it here in the next month. So it totally depends. I'm going to show you best case scenario that we're hoping to get the rents to by probably about one year from now and potentially sooner depending on how things play out. Again, I've done this multiple times and so I'm very confident what these units are worth. We believe that we can take the rents from the 3,750 that they're at and get it up to where this property is bringing in $10,100. Now again, this isn't going to happen right away because we are hoping a lot of the tenants that are in there will keep, but I'm gonna show you what the numbers look like with that change. If we go to run the numbers, you can see that now we have gone from a property that was losing money to a property that will cash flow well over 30,000, actually $37,000 a year. So that is an absolutely extreme difference and that is going to take us a year most likely to get to that point. But that gives you an idea on what our plans are for the property. And you can see really quickly how this was not clickbait. This is an absolutely atrocious deal. And this is a deal that a lot of people would be scared away from because there is going to be a lot of work and a lot of hoops you have to jump through to be able to get the rents where they need to be. But if we're able to pull this off over the course of the next year, this will turn into an extraordinary investment. Now, again, this isn't going to be stabilized right away, but overall, this property will hopefully turn into an absolute cash cow. Again, we're gonna have to put some work in, it's gonna take some time, and I think a lot of investors were scared from putting in a higher offer on this property because the rents were so terrible. And I think a lot of you out there are saying, Chandler, we actually think you got a crappy deal on it because you should have picked it up for a lot less with how bad the rents were. I can't really argue with you because it is a really bad deal right now, but I'm gonna keep you posted on this property just like I have with all of my other properties and we're gonna see what we can turn it into. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you remember to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. And if you wanna learn more about how to invest in real estate, this is the last couple weeks to pick up my real estate investing course for just 250 bucks. It's going to be jumping up to $500 at the beginning of next month. So if you wanna learn how to go through the whole process, how to go through due diligence, buying a property, running the numbers, all of that fun stuff, you can go and watch all of my YouTube videos for free, or if you like the way that I explain things, you can go and pick up the course. Now again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the future videos. Thanks guys.